I believe that I will do far more for veterans than John McCain has done for many, many years with all talk, no action. He's on television all the time, talking, talking, nothing gets done. You look at what's happening to our veterans, they're being decimated, okay? So I will do far more for veterans than anybody. John McCain has failed. Some of Donald Trump's comments causing that new uproar. Let's bring in the roundtable. Weekly Standard editor Bill Kristol, ESPN's LZ Granderson, former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm, who's the co-chair of Super PAC Priorities USA and a Hillary Clinton supporter, and ABC's chief White House correspondent John Carl. And a special welcome to LZ and Governor Granholm here for the first time as ABC News contributors. We're happy to have had you before many, many times. I want to start with our John Carl, however. Will this hurt him? Is this different? Is this a turning point? Well, this, this is what opened the floodgates of Republicans to finally come out and condemn Donald Trump. But look, he's uh, content to lead in the polls with 15, 17 percent. And I'll tell you, uh, Martha, there are two candidates that Trump unequivocally helps in this race. One now, the other in the future. The first is Jeb Bush, because he becomes the vessel for all of the anti-Bush anger in the party, and it's in somebody who is clearly unelectable, will not get the nomination. And the second is Hillary Clinton. You heard him again yesterday say that he will not rule out running as a third-party candidate. If that happens, he guarantees Hillary Clinton victory. And, and Bill Kristol, I think it was just yesterday you did a brief <laughs> interview with ABC News calling him older, wiser, richer, Don richer Donald Trump would be better than Hillary. Still think that? I think he's still older and richer than Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Though if she gives a few more speeches, maybe she'll catch up. But uh, no, I, I don't think that anymore, actually. I think it's one thing. He was a controversial character who said some useful things, I think, and brought some people into the Republican tent. But he jumped the shark yesterday. He's dead to me. And uh, no, seriously. He's dead I, to you. Yeah, seriously. No. I mean, he insulted every veteran, every, certainly every veteran who's, who's a POW, which is and with these insane statements about how it's, as if it's your fault that you're captured or shot down, and with a total lack of respect. For not just John McCain's, but I think other people made this point, Jim Webb made this point, for other people's military service and sacrifice. So I'm, I'm finished with Donald Trump, and I don't think it's going to, he'll, he'll, and I don't think, I don't think I'll stay up in the polls, incidentally. Republican primary voters are pro respect the military, and he showed disrespect for the military. Elsie, did his explanation do anything, change anything? Explanation? I thought it was more of a just furthermore branding sort of promotion. I mean, we all know he's not actually trying to be president of the United States. He's just trying to stir the pot to keep his brand out there, and that's just what he's been doing. Uh, I'm a little amazed. But has he gone too far this time? Well, I'm amazed that we think this is the moment that he's gone too far. I mean, he went on television and literally slandered an entire race of people. Why wasn't that the shark that got jumped? Why did it take the attack of John McCain to get people to get so upset that Republicans start tweeting and denouncing when he went there and said, well, I like some of the Mexicans, but the rest of them are a bunch of rapists and criminals? I mean, that to me was a shark jumping moment. And, and Governor, the Democrats do what? Just sit back and let this play out? Well, I was going to say before yesterday, that, you know, just put up your feet and break out the popcorn. But I do think that he really went too far. And I agree with LZ that he had gone too far already. And that this really, I think, um, is a, a signal of this sort of sinister um, thread that runs through a lot of the far right and Tea Party, this, this feeling like those who are different are not one of us, that it's frightening for many in the sort of old, uh, older white Americans who might be following him and who are angry, who may feel threatened by this, uh, Im by immigrants. I worry about that sinister threat, and I'll be interested to see whether, in fact, there is a, uh, you know, a diminution in his rankings, because if it still stays high, then I think there's a lot more that the Republican Party has to fear. And, and, and let's, look, let's that... look at those rankings first, John. We've, we've got in the latest ABC News Washington Post poll, obviously before these comments, Trump still had a 61 percent unfavorable rating, although his favorability has doubled since May, despite despite it's amazing those comments. when your favorability is 33 percent, and that is a doubling, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, it, what happens going forward? In, in a week from now, if we took another poll, what do you think that would say? Well, I, I still think there is a portion of that electorate that is extremely angry. I, I don't doubt that it will go down a degree on this, but look what happened in the room when he made those comments. 
One thing he was right about in the interview you just did with him is he did get a standing ovation, and he was enthusiastically applauded minutes after saying what he said about John McCain in that room. Now, by the way, the other thing he said is he was asked, uh, "Can you tell us? Do you ever ask God for forgiveness?" This was a this was a conservative. That was controversial, rights. right? Yeah. That in, in that room was. And he couldn't come up with a. With, well, I don't really know. I kind of leave God out of that. I think he kind of misunderstands evangelicalism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bill. We we also saw Scott Walker officially jump into the race this week. He's still doing well in the polls, both in Iowa and nationally. What's his vulnerability? I don't, I don't Maybe know. Maybe nothing? Yeah, I think he's a strong candidate, a Midwestern governor who governed successfully, won three times in four years in a, in a state that President Obama carried twice in that same period. And um, I think the Trump vote will go away. I don't buy the argument that there are a huge number of un Jennifer wants to make it seem like this huge chunk of the Republican Party is no, oh, Jennifer. vitriolic. I just think that there is It was a, the Democrats yesterday who hooted at a huge left wing convention who hooted Bernie Sanders and O'Malley, Governor O'Malley, off the stage for not being left wing enough. Governor O'Malley said, black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Unacceptable in the Democratic Party. So. I, I, I want to move on to Iran. Since I just got back from Iran, it's, a, it's particularly interesting to me. LZ, you tweeted this week questioning Republicans like Senator Tom Cotton, who are criticizing the deal. You said all about six is Senator Cotton, who has been in office for like six months, takes on the six nations that have been working on this Iran deal since 2006. Is there like a six 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 there was, thing there, going there? there? there was, I just thought it was kind of curious that the number six just kept appearing, and, <laughs> and, and and the way that the conversation continues to happen, especially domestically. I spent a couple of weeks in London. I was there for ESPN covering Wimbledon, and I can tell you that the conversation that's happening abroad in terms of this deal is totally different than the way that it's being promoted here or talked about here. Here is all through the lens of America. It's all through Congress, what Congress has to say. Abroad, it's about what's in it for Russia, what's in it for China, how does this impact the UK. It's a lot more about the, 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 the width of this deal and not just domestically. And I think that's important as we have this conversation here. This isn't about whether or not Obama negotiated a bad deal. This is about whether or not the six nations involved with the conversation found this deal to be advantageous versus the current status quo. That's the conversation we need to be do you think Congress doesn't have a right to say it's a way No, in? no, no. Part of the conversation is how Congress feels about it. But Congress isn't the leader of I'm the sorry. UK. It's not the leader well, of right. China. So it's Congress not the just gets to decide on whether America right. goes for, along for, with this for deal. Right, for America. But as yes. Americans, we need to have a conversation about, well, who else is impacted by this? And what are their thoughts on this as well? Because that should influence us to have an intelligent conversation about it and not just one that's solely based upon us. So let's quickly move to the Hill very quickly. Governor, you think it? what happens on the Hill? Well, I, I do think that people should actually take a look at Hillary Clinton's statement on this, because this is not the end of the story. She says it's a beginning, it's a first step. There are a lot of other arrows in the diplomatic quiver to, to constrain Iran's bad behavior in other areas. This is one thing, and the goal was to reduce Iran's ability to get the bomb, and they've done that. And give them $140 and John billion. Carl, I got, and I'm going to give you 10 seconds, and you know what that means. Well, <laughs> I, well I, I, I will tell you that I, the White House thinks that they can keep this disapproval resolution from passing the Congress by getting at least 41 no votes in the Senate. That means they can hold most of the Democrats. I don't know if that's the case, but they have, they're off to a good start. And, and what would this do to President Obama's foreign policy legacy? You've got 10 seconds. Yeah, I, I think it is a tremendous legacy because it shows that America can lead with allies and strategic coalitions. It doesn't have to be American unilateralism and cowboyism. Okay, thanks all of you very much. We'll keep an eye on it. We may not know the result of it for quite a long time. <laughs>